Reporting from Jerusalem for endtimes.com, this is Brian Schrager. An anxious hush has fallen on the land. Israel is on the verge of war. By the time you see this report, the Jewish state may have already been attacked by Iran. As I am speaking, however, that assault has not yet taken place, but it will. And it will be a bigger and more significant attack than the 320 missiles and drones fired by Tehran at Israel late on the evening of 13 April 2024, four short months ago. Why has the Islamic Republic of Iran pledged to strike again? After the murder of 12 Israeli Druze children by a Hezbollah rocket on Saturday, 27 July, Israel pledged a serious response. Days later, however, Jerusalem had done nothing. Then, on Tuesday evening, 30 July, Israel launched a rocket. With incredible precision, it struck a building in the heart of Beirut, killing Fuad Shukr, the senior military leader of Hezbollah. Not only was Shukr responsible for the rocket that killed 12 Israeli children, he also played a central role in the 1983 bombing of the U.S. Marine Corps barracks in Beirut, killing 241 U.S. military personnel. In fact, the U.S. had a standing reward of $5 million for information leading to his arrest. Apparently, Israel did not collect the $5 million, but it did send a message to Hezbollah. Authorize the murder of our civilians, our children? No matter who you are, no matter where you are, we can and we will reach you. But that wasn't all. Four days later, in the heart of Iran's capital city, Tehran, billionaire Ismail Haniyeh, chairman of the Hamas political bureau who authorized the slaughter and kidnapping of Israeli children, women and men on 7 October, arrived in Iran on Tuesday, 30 July, where he met with the so-called Supreme Leader of Iran, Ali Khamenei. Later that same day, Hania attended the inauguration of Iran's newly elected president, Masoud Pazeshkian. Returning to the luxurious residence where he was staying, presumably he went to bed. Then, at about 2.30 a.m. on Wednesday, 31 July, his suite exploded, either by bombs planted in the building or by a rocket launched somewhere in the city. Ismail Hania was dead. Iran blamed Israel for the assassination. For its part, Jerusalem has neither confirmed or denied the allegation. Regardless, Everyone in the Jewish state knows that their government carried out the execution. In the span of four days, four days, a leading commander of Hezbollah was killed in Lebanon's capital city, Beirut, and then the chairman of Hamas in the heart of Iran's government, Tehran. 
The genius of these actions was their incredible precision, their limited casualties, and their locations. It was a just and satisfactory response that focused on the enemy's leaders, not on their soldiers, not on the civilians living under their tyranny. On the other hand, the response of surviving leaders was quick. Iran's so-called supreme leader, Ali Khamenei, pledged a swift and significant response. Israel has secured a harsh punishment for itself, he said. Shortly thereafter, leaders from Iran's proxies were summoned to Tehran. Reportedly, key figures from Hezbollah in Lebanon, Hamas and Islamic Jihad in Gaza, and the Houthis in Lemon gathered in Tehran to discuss a coordinated attack on Israel. How serious is the threat? Very, very serious. Virtually every non-Israeli airline has canceled all flights to Israel. Various nations, including the U.S., the U.K., and Canada, have warned citizens against travel to Israel. And the U.S. has deployed a new carrier strike group along with 12 ballistic missile defense cruisers to the waters of the Middle East. Israel's security agency, the Shin Bet, roughly equivalent to the FBI in the United States, has imposed travel restrictions on Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu and members of his cabinet. It also advised the nation's diplomatic corps around the world to avoid crowds and lower their profile. Everyone in Israel is bracing for an imminent attack. According to U.S. Secretary of State Anthony Blinken, the attack could begin as early as today, Monday, 5 August, the same day on which I am recording this report. On Friday, 2 August, Netanyahu declared Israel's readiness. Please note, English subtitles have been burned into the following clip. I'm אלוף, אני מתרשם מהעבודה החשובה שנעשתה עד כה, וכמובן מההערכות שלנו לבאות. ישראל נמצאת במוכנות גבוהה מאוד לכל תרחיש, הן בהגנה, הן בהתקפה. אנחנו נגבה מחיר כבד מאוד על כל מעשה תוקפנות נגדנו, מכל זירה שהיא. לאחר שחיסלנו שלשום את רמטכ"ל חיזבאללה, מוחסן, היום הגיע העימות הסופי לחיסולו של רמטכ"ל חמאס, מוחמד דף. דף היה אחראי לטבח הנורא של השבעה באוקטובר וגם לפיגועים רצחניים רבים נגד אזרחי ישראל. הוא היה המבוקש מספר אחד של ישראל במשך שנים והחיסול שלו מקבע עיקרון פשוט שקבענו מי שפוגע בנו, אנחנו פוגעים בו. What is the attack from Iran likely to look like? Based on Tehran's summons of its proxies to Iran, the attack is likely to be from all directions at the same time. Unlike the missiles fired on 13 April, coming only from the east, from Iran, the pending attack probably will come from every point on the compass, from the north, from the south, from the east, and from the west. If you are not yet a subscriber to endtimes.com and would like to see the rest of this important report and others like it, I urge you to subscribe right now at the website endtimes.com. For only $7 a month, you will receive a wealth of information and insight from Jimmy Evans, Mark Hitchcock, and experts from around the world, including Israelis living right here in the Jewish state. Do yourself a favor, sign up today. Then join me as together we consider the likely intensity and timing of Iran's pending attack on the Jewish state of Israel.